Alrighty, so welcome back to the channel, folks. This is your mate Mick. I am Dundee. And you're probably thinking, what the hell are you riding? <coughs> well, so I decided that I'd uh, come down to Adelaide and see the big, big famous bull bucket to catch up with him. Anyway, I, um, I rented a, uh, a bullet 500, but uh, I got to the store and they turned around, a Royal Enfield that is, a Royal Enfield bullet, uh, 500 trials, and they got down to the store and they turned around to me and said, we've um, sold them all, so basically we don't have one. So, I got a classic, 500 classic, which is actually not too bad. It's quite cruisy. There it is over there, Royal Enfield store. It's an interesting um, bike. Completely different to the Sportster, that's for sure. People just need to learn to drive in this state. That bold bucket calls home. I call fucking dangerous. <coughs> but nah, she's alright. So yeah, I'll be catching up with him while I'm down here, but I thought, why not have a little bit of a chat now on the way home? Just to sort of show you what I got because I did all my research on the Bullet Tri 500 and um, yeah. I've got a classic 500. No, this is brand new, mind you. This has got like seven kilometers on it. So I'm going to put it down to being a, a, the 2021 or a 2022 model. So, but I am in Adelaide and I'm in my old haunting ground actually because I used to work just in this building right here. So I've got to remember that this indicators don't turn off. So my Sportster, obviously they do. This is interesting I don't know but we're gonna have a lot of fun with this bike over the next few days I won't thrash it because I'm not that type of person but I'm gonna give it a good red hot friggin ride and I'm gonna put a few kilometers on this bike so this is through um, e a company called Eagle Rider which is an Australian worldwide uh, well, I think it's actually worldwide world rock wide yeah well wide Oh, wow. You know, when you say things and sometimes you just don't know if it sounds right. So yeah, worldwide company called Eagle Rider. I think everyone's heard of Eagle Rider. So, you know, put your indicator on for that long. Oh, fucking hell. Anyway, yeah, so, went online, booked it relatively cheap for the four days that I've got it for um, and now I'm sort of just riding it back up to where basically Bolt and myself live well not where I live but where I'm staying uh, where, uh, I'm not too sure about this bike but it's fucking hard on the ass but yeah anyway let's uh, I will do a little bit more um, discussions around the bike itself and what it is and things like that but I think as you can tell, I think Royal Enfield 500 Classic done a pretty good job, I think, personally. Um, sounds absolutely terrible. So the first thing that I notice on this bike is my sitting position. I'm actually quite high, which isn't that bad personally. I've always felt that if I'm higher up on the bike, especially when I used to have sports bikes, I wasn't getting buffeted as much in the wind. Um, I read an article once when I used to ride trail bikes and they reckon that yeah, if the, it's so windy and it's hitting you in the chest and you haven't got this visor, put your elbows out. I don't know how true that is, but it worked for me and you'd be surprised at how much the wind kind of doesn't buffet you as much. And I suppose it is like that trail bike ride, you know, that, uh, and this, sort of grip style is very very kind of trail bike style itself and 
I will go over the bike a little bit more soon anyway, but the problem is that I've only got the one camera on at the moment. So I'm sorry about that. I didn't bring the other one. I felt it might've been a little bit rude to uh, attach it in front of everyone. There was about five or six people there. So it was kind of like, okay, dude, you don't really need to be there. And my indicator is still on. Shit, man, I've got to learn to take this indicator off. Bad. All right, it doesn't matter. We're going to get the indicator off. We're going to learn to take the indicator off, okay? Indicator must come off all times, every time. <sighs> Stupid one side indicator. But it's red. It's like Royal Enfield red. I really do like the color. It's like a really nice color. And it matches the gloves. Oh, it looks like I need a new pair of gloves. Hey, Kraken, when are you doing your next giveaway? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> No, seriously, Odin, if you watch, I need a new pair. I can't complain. I mean, I've only been on the bike for 10 minutes, maybe. And I clicked it off that time. Yeah, hey! Winner, winner! Chicka dinner! Um, suspension is very hard on it at the moment. And I'm not a tall guy, but as you can see, I'm, I am flat foot with my four inch Johnny Reb heels on. Let's get it, so get up and go. I don't know what the torque specs on it, but he did say it's got some good torque and it, yeah, I'll give you a due. It's got some torque. We'll find out in the, you know, about half hour when I get onto the motorway. This is going to be 60 all the way until I get onto the main motorway and then I can open it up to 100 at least, 60 miles an hour because, you know, here in Australia, that's the speed limit. But, I mean, it's not, I don't think this bike was built for speed at any stage. I think it was, it was te definitely built for its looks. And I'm gonna say that it's not so much the looks for me, it's the actual, the, the more I ride this, the comfier it is. The seat, I know I complained about it when I first got on it, cause it was really hard, but I think give it, give it a couple of hours and riding or a couple of days and you'll probably be all right. But I feel that I need to be wearing a suit and tie while I ride this. And be a gentleman while I ride this. I know the helmet really doesn't match the bike. In fact, my whole get up is screams, I wish I had a Harley. <laughs> but I'm riding a Royal Enfield. <laughs> this dude's probably thinking, who are you talking to? I'm talking to my millions of fans, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he just looked at me like, who the hell are you talking to? Old taco, no digital stuff here. And I think that's what makes the bike as well. So it's that old school technology, but well, it's not really old school technology. Everyone still uses it. The difference is nowadays is that it's, it's pretty cool still. So yeah, it's only got a fuel light, but so does my Sportster, so it's not like it's anything different. It's got engine light, it's got the, um, just the purely and simply old school gauge to open up. And that's it. It's basic. Big ass headlight at the front, which I'm assuming is going to be halogen. I'll have to have a look after when I get off. Some of these old retro round mirrors on the side here, which are really good because, you know, apart from me looking at my shoulder, on this side I don't have to, but on my left is I'm looking at my shoulder. But you can hear the uh, the clutch engage with each gear. It's like a clunk, clunk, clunk. It's got that old school feel about it. And I know it's new school, like it's 2022 model, but it's got that old school feel. Not that I've ridden a lot of old school bikes, but I'm, I'm assured that anyone who has ridden a, a Royal Enfield at all would say the same, I'm assuming. Because I think that's what they're looking for is that aesthetics of these bikes. And they are very cool. They look interesting. They look like a cool bike. And I actually have always wanted to ride one, I suppose. Ever since I watched a couple of other people ride them with uh, through the um, Distinguished Gentleman ride that we have down here. There's Mr. Harry Hopper again. He's finally caught up to me. All right. There we are. There's 80. There's 85. <laughs> On three lanes. One, two, three. Go! Oh, there's a hundred. 
That's it. That's all the gears. Four gears. <laughs> but I tell you, it's sitting on 100 and she's vibrating like a bitch. But surprisingly, I'm not really getting that buffeted on the wind. Oh yeah, she's struggling. Oh yeah, she struggles. But I expect this to struggle. It's a 499cc bike. Oh, there we go, that's always fun. There we go, I'm gonna put the guts down. It's got torque, it's around the trucks. Oh, she smells! <laughs> you, can fit, you can smell it. It's trying to go faster, but it's about, uh, I think anywhere between 90 and 100 is really where it doesn't want to climb to. But like I said, this bike is not built I don't think it's built for speed. It wasn't to be built so that you could go 140 mile, 140k an hour, 120k an hour. This bike is built for looks, for style, for that small trip, not this highway trip. I'm struggling to get it to 100. To be honest, it, I, 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 that's flat. That is flat gearing. I am all the way over on the accelerator but I am going uphill. There we are, we're at 100. And I think it's because I'm actually going downhill. Don't know what happened then. Bit of a flat spot. Normally I'm getting blasted in the chest and feeling it. This, I'm really not. And it may be because I'm protected by, you know, these big banks of hills there. Oh, I can help. Does this quite often. I don't know what the hell is that. It's like a little flat spot. It's like, hey, you've hit me at 100k an hour and now I'm not gonna go any faster than that. So it goes choke. So, it doesn't do anything special, does it? It just goes I don't know why, it's like a flat spot. So I need to Google the shit out of this thing. But it is a 2022 Royal Enfield, classic 500. Folks, I'm Mick, I'm Dundee. You have a good one and I'll catch you soon. Soup.